Hi everybody and welcome to the September Q&A video here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. I'd like to first off apologize if you see a fly buzzing around from time to time. I have been trying to kill it all day. Haven't had any luck. Trying, haven't had any luck. It's looking for warmth and apparently my body's extremely warm so it's like, oh this is perfect, it's a nice warm, I, I can sense warmth and it's trying to find me. That's what it is. So. There is that. Also, um, I want to make this um, very apparent because there's a lot of issues right now going on with me IRL. I do not know if there will be another Q&A video before the end of the year. I want to put that out here right now because of issues that are going on uh, with my family and me that might result in my mom and I not having a place to live anymore. So I wanted to put that out there because that's the shit that's going on right now. So, let's dive into this. I got 10 questions this month, so it's not uh, gonna be too long of a video, so that's fine. So, first question, uh, do you think the Power Rangers will eventually get rid of those annoying stuff we had since the Neo Saban era? Uh, being too kid-friendly, moral of the day episodes, conflicts that get resolved quickly at the end of the episode, uh, them reusing the Go Go Power Rangers theme, etc. Here's the deal. Um, Power Rangers always had a moral of the day episode. It was monster of the week, moral of the day. Every, every single time. Uh, most of the time it was like two episodes it took to get to the moral. Or in the case of Tommy Oliver, five episodes in the entire week. Um, being too kid friendly, it was always made for kids. It was, it was never an adult show. It was always made for kids. Uh, kids were the ones that were at the forefront of it. Kids were the ones that were the central... Um, reasoning behind it. It was made for kids, not for adults. So that does make a huge difference. Uh, if it would have been made for adults, I would have said, yeah, man, the kid-friendly shit. You have to remember, though, this is uh, this is a kid's show. This was made for kids. This is not an adult show. The adult Power Rangers that we got with the blood and the gore, even the actual actors that did Power Rangers, the official Power Rangers, did not approve of this. Th th they said, this is disgusting. Because Power Rangers has always been a sort of kid friendly. Going too kid friendly, that's just. To us, it might seem too kid friendly. And that's the thing. There's a point when you reach. It's like, here you are as a kid, okay? This is your kid. And then this is you as a teenager. So now your kiddie stuff's kind of getting lower. Then as you get to be an adult, you notice what's dropped off a lot further. So for us, while the kid, well, it might seem too kid friendly to us as adults, to kids it might be, oh, this is good. But if the kids are saying it's too kid friendly, well, that's just the writing. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, conflicts that get resolved quickly at the end of the episodes. Um, if it's going with the moral of the day, that's the entire point of it. Remember, they have to have an entire thing go with the three parts. Uh, you're introduced to the issue, the issue reaches its apex, and then it has the conclusion. It's the B plot, basically. The A plot is whatever uh, monster of the week they're fighting. Or like in this, let's me let me use um, an episode of the original Mighty Morphin, for example. So there was an episode um, in the original Mighty Morphin where Kimberly was, I think, terrified of pumpkins or something. Halloween episode, and she eventually overcame the fear at the end of it because she kind of had to in order to fight Rita's monster. So you had the start of it where we learned that she was terrified the apex in the middle where her fear was making it a hindrance to her actually having to battle Rita because Rita kind of made that the integral part of her monster and then the end of it when she overcame her fear so it's not exactly that it got um resolved quickly it's that it was designed to be resolved within the span of one episode um, sometimes like I said there are episodes that do take longer to resolve and stuff like that but that's the general gist of it is most of them were like that as for reusing the go-go power rangers theme yes that that i wish would stop <laughs> that i wish would stop to be honest with you um the neo saban era didn't exactly it didn't exactly give us a lot of bad stuff save for mega force and super mega force those will forever go down in history as the worst power rangers adaptations in the history of mankind a real shame because they really butchered go kaiser which fucking bastards I give a pass to Samurai because, and I have stated this before, 
unless I hear otherwise and contrary to uh, opinion, I kind of feel like uh, Haim Saban was forced into a wall with this. That they Nickelodeon just like backed him into a corner and said, hey, look, we need this now. And hence why it was just dubbed the Sentai. Um, all right, it was already going to be a bit of an uphill battle. Granted, he could have made it work. I, I'm not lying about that. It, it could have worked. But I kind of feel like it was more of an uphill battle of, well, we need to, we need this now. You need to make this happen. Snap, snap, snap. And it was just like, you know what? It's just going to be faster to just dub the Sentai. Just dub the Sentai. It'll be faster. Focus on the other one. Just dub the damn Sentai. Uh, you also have to remember Nickelodeon's arbitrary X amount of episodes per season rule. Um, it just the Neo Saban era was butchered by Nickelodeon. Let's just get that right out right out in the open. It was butchered by Nickelodeon. Samurai and Super Samurai get a pass for me. I, I, I'm not gonna. At first, I was gonna go okay. They really kind of half fast this. But then after realizing how scummy Nickelodeon can get with some of their programs, anything that isn't the little yellow uh, piss color tampon alternative, I kind of understand and I get the, uh, I get now why Samurai kind of sucked a little bit, but there was no excuse for Mega Force. If you're dubbing the Sentai, that gives you more time to work on the next one coming up, so that was complete and total BS. They could have easily, he could have easily like, okay, Three of you are going to work on this. You're just dubbing the Sentai. It's not that hard. The rest of us are going to go work on Mega Force and Super Mega Force. And that's where, to me, the whole fucking... That, that was it. Um, after that, though, with them jumping, it's like, okay, well, we're not going to do this one, but we're going to do this one. Whatever floats their boat. I will admit the writing for the first episode of Dino Charge was a lot better. It did harken back to the older Power Rangers. But the damage was pretty much done at that point I want to say because of Nickelodeon just fucking the pooch so many times that it just it, it, was, it was like beating a dead horse and the dead horse just killed over and it's like fuck this I'm done so as far as I'm concerned yes it sucks that the Neo Saban era was total garbage like that but at the same time what do you expect I mean as far as the stuff nowadays uh, I really wish it would not be on Netflix I, I, I cannot tell you how much I wish it would not be on Netflix because of Netflix's reputation with kids. I really wish it would not be on Netflix. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I would like it to... I mean, a lot of the stuff that was in the Neo Saban era, you have to remember, Saban did start Power Rangers for us in the States. Originally, it was just the Sentai. We got the Power Rangers because of Saban. So having the kid-friendly feel, the moral of the day episodes, and the conflicts getting resolved within the span of an episode, that's fine. Because that's the formula that it had back in the 90s. Just transplant the formula now. A little bit of an upgrade, but still the same deal. As far as reusing the GoGo Power Rangers theme, yeah. I, I, there, was a, there was a really cool theme uh, for Power Rangers RPM that was not used. You can actually find it on YouTube. It's really cool. Um, I like that a lot more than the RPM theme. So I kind of feel like if they would have actually put a little more effort into the music, like for the theme song, I kind of feel like it would work. Now, granted, like I said, Samurai gets a pass. It's like, look, just do this. It, it was a quick and dirty job because they had no choice in the matter, thanks to Nickelodeon just being complete and total assholes about it. There's no, there was nothing they could do about it. But for Mega Force on, I kind of feel like they uh, just... No, they, they, they dropped the fucking ball massively. Massively. It, it, I mean, granted, okay, it did get better when Hasbro took over a bit, but again, Netflix, I, I'm not... I am not happy it's on Netflix. I'm really not happy about that. But, uh, yeah, that... Do I think it'll eventually get rid of it? Um, you gotta remember, kid-friendly, moral of the day, conflicts, those were always part of Power Rangers. That was in its DNA. Reusing the theme... Yeah, I, that would be nice they would just get rid of that and just have standalone themes every year that would be nice any fandoms out there that you like and are a part of any particular fandom okay so <clears throat> I'm a fan of Moral Oral I like Moral Oral um, Hunter Hunter because the sad part is I slept on that and I kicked myself every day for sleeping on that series um, but yes I am a fan of Moral Oral Hunter Hunter 
Um, Dragon Ball, with the exception of GT Kai, I, I, those two I fucking hate. I'm not a fan of the Broly movie, the newer one, uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly, because it retconned everything, and, and that, that pissed me off. Um, Digimon, Pokemon, you well, obviously Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> I'm a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Um, there are fandoms out there that I like, and there are a bunch that I'm a part of. Um, do I like openly say, "Oh, I, I'm a huge fan of your series"? My God, it's so beautiful. No, because no, I'm one of those quiet couch ones. Like I'll just sit and I'll watch it, or I'll talk about it online. If somebody has a comment or somebody puts up a video, I might drop a idea or something like Transformers, Beast Wars, shit like that. But as far as um, like actually 100% going out there and saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm a diehard fan of yours," my God, it's so beautiful. No, I'm not that type of person. No. Oh my god, no. Uh, but any particular fandoms, there's a bunch. But yeah, I I, I like a bunch of fandoms. Um, it, it's not... I mean, they, they get toxic. I'm not going to lie. They get toxic. Um, massively fast, too. But uh, yeah, it's not that bad. Not that bad. Which card game did you play the most as a kid? Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Digimon, etc. Um, believe it or not... <laughs> You guys are going to find this funny. So, when I was in fourth grade, uh, that was when Pokemon really hit the States and just fucking took off like a goddamn rocket out of its ass. Um, the anime series itself, the very first episode that I saw was the one when Ash's Charmeleon was trying to help a Paris evolve. That was my first episode of Pokemon. I'm not joking. That was the first episode of Pokemon that I ever saw. Uh, and I remember uh, Kids WB was like, well, world premiere Pokemon, and this is the episode I got. And I, I'm not joking. I remember that. Um, I did not get any of the cards until that summer. My mom and I were walking around our local mall. They had a trading card show going on. And it was like $3.99 for a pack of cards, so my mom got me one. And I was like, okay, cool. I got cards. I did not do any of the playing with it. I eventually would collect some more of them. I would trade some now and then, but I never exactly played it. Digimon came along. The Digimon card game. I did get a bunch of those packs. I do remember getting the one structure deck because I still I still have my Saber Leomon cards that came with it. I still have that card. Um... I do remember uh, my one classmate in middle school had a couple Digimon cards. I remember getting one that I also still have. Uh, was Greymon uh, just kind of like laying down like he's passed out dreaming of food? It was really cute. I still have that card just because of that just because of that artwork. Um, I never exactly played it. I just collected the cards because I can never understand how in the hell you play this game. It's that was just my issue with it. I never understood how to play it. When it came to Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm, well, let's just say I jumped into that. I just jumped into the deep end of that fast, as I, as fast as I could, to it's like sink or swim, and oh, I, I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! I did try Duel Masters um, for a time, but I could not get into that. Most of the cards I got were like at flea markets and yard sales. I remember, I think I got like one booster pack that I bought and I had gotten like one as a free promo gift from a magazine. That was it. And I was like, all right, fuck this crap. Um, Cardfight Vanguard I tried, but that was after I was a teenager and more like an adult. So, but yeah, as far as like when I was a kid, Yu-Gi-Oh! Because that was middle school and Yu-Gi-Oh! I was just, once, once Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, that was it. I was just, I was hooked on Yu-Gi-Oh! That was it. Once, once Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, I was... I bought a dual disc. Every time I got my allowance, I went and spent it on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I was, we actually knew a couple state troopers. Um, and the one was talking with my mom, and I was standing around there, and they were talking about this. And I said, hey, I said, why? I spend my money on Kitty Crack for the mind, not the body. And they misunderstood that, and they're like, well, wait a minute. Do we need to take him out back and explain to him about how drugs are bad? And my mom goes, no, no, no. You didn't hear him. He spends his money on trading cards and other stuff. He doesn't spend it on drugs or alcohol. Oh! Oh, well, that's fine! Yeah, go for it! That's fine! 
Um, but yeah, I, Yu-Gi-Oh is what kind of I just dived into that. Uh, Pokemon, I mean, I had I still have some Pokemon cards. In fact, to me, I actually a really fun story. So I actually did trade away my Zapdos card. I got in the very first the very first ever pack of Pokemon cards I got. I scored a Zapdos pull. And that was what I got, and I traded it because fuck, I didn't know what the hell I, I didn't know what the cards were worth. I didn't know it was a good card back then. Um, and I traded it away. I don't remember what I, I don't even remember what I traded it for. But I just remember I traded it, and I'm like, well, this is gonna suck. Um, and then I'm at a flea market. Years later. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking like a good, I want to say almost a decade, maybe later. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe about a decade, maybe like five, ten years later. I'm at a flea market. Exact same card. I'm not, I am not joking you. I'm not joking. It wasn't the same person I traded it to, though. I, there's no way it could have been the kid was younger. And I'm like, that's my Zapdos card. I don't know how it's like it, it could have been one for it could have been just another pull but it's like no that that, that one's mine something was just like that was my Zapdos card I'm like I, I bought it back for two bucks I still have it <laughs> I still have it I still have it I'm like I still have it I mean that that, that to me is one story it's like yeah I traded a Zapdos like so many years ago I don't even remember what I traded it for either but it's like, I still have it. I still have it. That's, uh... I still have it. That's pretty cool. I still have it. But, uh, yeah. That was just... Yeah, but Yu-Gi-Oh! I dived headfirst. Uh, Digimon... I mean, I remember getting Digimon cards. And I was like, okay, this isn't that bad of a card game. But I could not figure out how to play it. Reading the instructions off of the, um, starter set. I was like... You know what? I'm just gonna you know I'm just gonna collect these because I don't understand how to play this game. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! On the other hand, oh, I got Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, fuck that. Yu-Gi-Oh! is easy. Now it's a little more complex. When I first, when I started Yu-Gi-Oh! It was easy. Now it's complex. <laughs> now it's complex. Um, when I started, it was a lot easier. Now it's more complex. So that that should um that should tell you something. But uh, oh my god. Oh my god, that who boy, that was Wow, but yeah. Definitely Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh the most Digibot second and Pokemon uh sadly would be dead last because I did not I did not get a lot of Pokemon cards when I was I mean I remember um there was like a there was around Thanksgiving. Uh, actually, no, it was Thanksgiving actually. Uh, my grandfather quick took me to Walmart. I don't remember what the, why the hell we went to Walmart for. I don't don't remember why the hell we went to Walmart. Uh but that was like the most uh, I had gotten from trading cards, and I remember I got like a lot of duplicates. It was a jungle um, booster pack, and I remember I got like a lot of duplicates that I gave some of the duplicates to my one classmate. And I kind of, then my mom, I kind of said something to my mom, and she's like, "Well, I'm not going for them to get them back." I'm like, "Well, was it a good idea?" She's like, "Yeah, she goes, they were duplicates. That's fine. Mm, all right." It's like they were duplicates. That's fine. Because you don't need two of everything. Mm -hmm. So. But, um, yeah, Digimon second, Pokemon third, Yu-Gi-Oh's number one, hands down. Who's your favorite Transformers character from the toy lines, comics, cartoons, and the anime adaptations? Optimus Prime, obviously. I am a huge Optimus Prime. I have a nice little Optimus Prime collection. Um, I did have the one from Transformers Cybertron, but I had to sell that. Um, that was years ago. Like over six years ago because I needed the money sadly um, though most of my Transformers now though are probably going to be going up on the chopping block so that's you know not entirely good but um, definitely Optimus Prime I mean, it, it, most of the bigger ones, smaller ones that I could probably fit into a box or something that I might be able to keep but the other ones I gotta I, I gotta ditch those or two, I gotta get rid of the bigger ones but um, definitely Optimus Prime was always my favorite hands down um, I did kind of like RC, but I don't have RC. Um, Black Arachne, I have that one. Rhinox, Rat Trap. Uh, I actually like Cheetor from uh, Transfer, but I like the Transmetal Cheetor. The original one, kinda, it was like, okay, but when he went to Transmetal, 
Um, that was fun. I, I thought that was a good. Bu I thought that was a good look, and I actually remember getting that figure. I was so excited. I was, I had like three of those. Um, sadly, they're all gone. <laughs> I have owned like three of them in my life, <laughs> and I had to sell them all. Um, I did like the Transmetal Two Dinobot. It was a. I really did like that. On mine, sadly, uh, I. This is how you could tell that I was a kid that loved my toys. I beat it to hell. <laughs> I played. I played. I played the dog piss out of that toy. Uh, I played the dog piss out of it. Um, it was just like the pieces were breaking off. The joints were. It just it, it took a pounding with me as its owner, and I'm like, you know what? I liked it. I, I had fun. For me, I always feel like toys are something that you should play with, and they're not something to just put in a shelf and keep in the box so that it never sees the light of day. They are meant to be played with. They're meant to interact with children, with some person. They're not meant to just sit on a shelf and be a collector's item and go, well, I'm never going to see the light of day outside this plastic container, but at least at least I can see my the person that bought me before they put me up on eBay. <laughs> oh. Uh, but yeah, I, I beat I beat the ever loving hell out of that toy. I love that one. Um, I like the Transmetal Megatron from Beast Wars, so that's another one. Uh, Optimal Optimus obviously was one of my favorites. I actually did not like the Dragon Megatron too much, but it was bad. Tiger Hawk was okay. It was kind of cool, but uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like all of them uh, that I can think of. Shit, there's a lot. Um. Like I said, Optimus, definitely Rhinox, Rat Trap. I know Rhinox was my mom's favorite, and I kind of liked Rhinox too in a way, but I was more of an Optimus fan. Rat Trap, though, was one of my favorites. It's a snarky little bastard. Uh, Black Arachnia, Megatrons, Transmetal Form, Cheeto Transmetal Form. I'm, I'm going through my mind thinking like I'm in Beast Wars now. Beast Machines can go piss off. Uh, well, no, I actually like Tankor from Beast Machines, so, but still, that whole series can go piss off. Um... Christ. Um, R.I.D. I didn't really like any of them. I didn't even like the Optimus in R.I.D. Because I felt like I felt like the Robots in the Sky series was just bad. In general, I mean, granted the combination between Optimus and Ultra Magnus I thought was cool, but it just was not enough to save it in my opinion. Uh, I, I really did not like that one. I don't know why. Uh... Armada will be next. I did like the I did like the mini cons from Armada, the Perceptor mini con that you could get the three street teams that combined into Perceptor. That was pretty cool. I thought that was cool. Um, Vector Prime from uh, Energon. No, no Cybertron. Cybertron. Cyber, that, that one was Cybertron. Cybertron. Oh, what the fuck was Energon? It's Armada. Well, yeah, Armada. I didn't really like too many of them. I mean, Tidal Wave was cool in Armada, and the bit in Energon that he was in, that was cool. Uh, that's pretty much about it. I mean, com me, anime adaptations, I haven't seen that many of them, but uh, eh, I would say, uh, well, op obviously Optimus Prime, hands down. There's like a ragtag group of others, but Optimus Prime. Hands down Optimus Prime. Hands down Your favorite Hollywood actors and actresses of all time. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Um, too fucking many to name. <laughs> That's too many to name. Uh. Well, I did like Melissa Joan Hart growing up. I Because I watched uh, old episodes of Clarissa Explains It All. I remember, because that always came on uh, when I was uh, going to school, when I was in elementary school. That was on on a Monday. And I remember the one time... Uh, my grandmother wanted to watch something and I had to be out in the living room because I was doing my homework yet and my mom goes no 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 just forget it Andy's girlfriend's on it's like trust me you're not getting you're not getting the TV trust me just let she's like, she's like mom let it go for half an hour trust me it, just trust me it's better this way <laughs> trust me oh, and then she also she goes oh Okay, I can understand it. She is kind of cute. I was like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did like uh, Spring of the Teenage Witch, though, growing up. Uh, it's up until it went to the WB. When it went to the WB, they... they, they oh, my God. This is fucking college years. They, they shot that bitch to hell. <laughs> they, shot that, they shot that series to hell. 
fast. It, oh my god. What well, was a really great series that had funny humor and campiness is just boom. There's the it's just made a crater <laughs> in the fucking ground. Um, Schwarzenegger. I was a huge Schwarzenegger fan when I was a kid. Uh, Terminator, Kindergarten Cop. I love those movies. Um, God, I'm gonna move. There, there's like, like I said, there's so goddamn many. There's, there are too many. Uh, there are way too many. I, I can tell. I think I can tell you more of the ones that I hate more than the ones that I like. There's I like. Anyway, my favorites. So the ones that I like are my favorites. The ones I'll tolerate. <laughs> They're in the middle group. And then the ones that no matter what they do, I will never watch their shit again. That's my t that's my tier list. Um, and one of them that goes keeps going further and further down. Um, oh god, what the hell is his name? Uh, it's the one that. Oh, there's so many of them. I, I can't think. Just the problem. I can't think of their names now. I can't think. Of, that's right. I can't think of their names now. Um. Oh, well, at least Schwarzenegger and Melissa Joan Hart are my two, uh, for the, at least that I can use to answer this question for the time being, but there's a lot more than just them. So, yeah, th there's more, but those are the only ones that are coming to my mind right now. So. Are you considering on... Yeah, are you considering on getting a Discord server? Okay, so... I thought about it, and there was a... When I lost my job back in June, uh, there was a thing that I put out that I put an application in for. I don't even know if it's still valid or not. I kind of hope it is, because um, I never actually uh, finished it up because of stuff that was going on. So there actually was a place that I put out, and it was you were required to have a Discord uh, account to be part of their server to communicate with them. And I signed up for it, but I didn't have my microphone at the time, and I didn't have a camera, or just, I would have been fine with just a microphone, but I didn't have, the only one I had at the time was this, and the battery was going dead at the time, I didn't get a chance to charge it up, so I didn't actually communicate with them, uh, I think it's still valid, I hope, I don't, I mean, I don't know, I hope it's still valid, but that would be really cool, but uh, I actually did sign up for a Discord account. As for making a server... I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's one of those, it's an up-in-the-air thing. So, you know, take that as you will. Interpret that as you will. It's one of those up-in-the-air things for me. Are you scared of anything? Yes. Um, heights. Now, for the record, I am 6263. When I was working at Five Below, uh, occasionally I had to climb up into the loft, which is above the office and above the bathrooms and that. I would get terrified. Just looking down, I would, you know, I, it, I would get a little scared because I am not a fan of heights. I, I don't do heights, basically. I, I, don't, I don't do heights. So there's that. Insects. Now, there are some exceptions. This. I am fine with caterpillars. I am fine with ladybugs. I am fine with praying mantises. And I am fine with grasshoppers. Ants I'll tolerate. But that's it. Uh, I mean, if it's smaller than me, I, I really don't have an issue with it at all. But as far as like bees, wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, stink bugs... Um, flies annoy me. Uh, any any flying insect, I have an issue with, massively have an issue with, because it's the buzzing that they make. It, it scares the living shit out of me. Uh, and I think you could probably go with the fact because uh, years ago, when the stink bug issue was really getting bad uh, in PA. I actually, one night I woke up and I, I, I could hear this buzzing in my ear. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, okay, there's a freaking insect flying around. No, I had a stink bug that decided to lodge itself in my ear. And I remember pulling it out. I remember going, oh my God, a freaking stink bug was in my ear, literally in my ear. 
I remember running down to the bathroom and getting a Q-tip, putting soap on it, and washing that to try to get to try to overpower that stink bug smell, so that no more of them would come anywhere near me for the rest of the night. I, I'm not kidding. That that terrified the shit out of me. <laughs> um, but yeah, heights I'm terrified of. Bugs, I, well, bugs I'm scared of. Small spaces, yes, I am a bit claustrophobic. I am not a fan of small spaces. Uh, small, tight. Mm -mm, no, no, no. I mean, if it's like, a, if I'm outside and it's a big crowd of people, I'm uncomfortable, but it's not like I'm going to be like, you know, panicking or anything. But like, let's say uh, somebody shoves me into a broom closet, locks the door, and I. You know, and it's like there's four walls around me and I do not know where the exit is or I can't get out. I'm going to start panicking a bit. I, I am a bit claustrophobic. Uh, one of the things I was always afraid of was... Freaking fly. Was uh, when I was in high school, uh, one of the, quote, bullies of my school, one of the kids that hated me, um, getting a bunch of their friends together and trying to shove me into a locker. Now, keep in mind again, 6263 trying to shove me into a locker. That just terrified the crap out of me. So, yeah, uh, small spaces I'm scared of. Hands down. Uh, there are other things, but those are the ones that top my list. Right off the bat, those are the ones that top my list. Is You know, um, just that. Those are the ones that top my list. What are your overall thoughts on Stargate so far? It's a great sci-fi show from what I've seen of the clips. I've actually watched it, so I am really getting pissed off this fly. Go the fuck away, fly. <clears throat> All right. I've actually seen Stargate. Now, Stargate and Stargate Atlantis, because my mom and I were watching it um, on Pluto. There's a, de there is a dedicated Stargate, U uh, Stargate Pluto channel. So if you ever go to Pluto.tv, there is a Stargate uh, Pluto channel. Best part is, if you go to the on-demand section for free, because you'll have commercials, just put up commercials, you can actually watch all the episodes of Stargate, Stargate Atlantis, and Stargate Universe. Now, I hate Stargate Universe with a passion. Flat out hate it. Sci-fi, fuck that, right to hell, and they can burn in hell for screwing the pooch on this one. That, is a, that, that was a blight on an otherwise spotless record for Stargate. Continuum. Stargate Continuum. There is a movie. Hate it. My mom and I watched it one time. I watched it twice. I've seen it twice so far. Because I, well, she never saw it before. I was like, oh, I'm like, God, I'll sit through it. Fuck it. I'll sit through it. I'll sit through it. I'll sit through it. I'll sit through it. Oh God, it sucks. Oh, does it suck? Oh boy, does it suck? I can't even begin to tell you how much it sucks. It it's it sucks. It blows. Then there's Arc of Truth. Um, I would like to consider Arc of Truth, or Arc of Truth, to be the series finale for SG One. That 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 to me is the series finale of SG One because it takes care of the Ori, it clears the board, everybody wins, happy days. That, that, that's what I consider that to be the finale. Continuum, I consider that to be a fucking middle finger. Um, SG-1 was okay. I, I, I kind of like Atlantis more. Hear me out. I like, Star, I like Star Trek The Next Generation. I really liked Star Trek Voyager. It's just my thing. You know, the original's fine. The spinoffs are usually a little better. Because they're taking what worked from the original and they're adding a new twist to really keep you hooked. And they did. I liked Atlantis. I thought that was really good. SG-1 wasn't bad. Um, I, I, like I said, I've seen them all. I, I've technically seen them all. My mom's the one that had it. I introduced her to that. I got her hooked on Stargate. That's worth at least 50 weeb points as far as I'm concerned. I got her hooked on Stargate. I'll never let her live that down. He's like, yeah, I got you hooked on Stargate. I know. I got you hooked on Stargate. I know. You know, I got you hooked on Stargate. Shut up. 
Uh, but um, yeah, as far as um, my thoughts on it, I, I liked it. SG1 wasn't bad. Atlantis wasn't bad. Universe can go fuck itself. Right into it. Right into a black hole and go fuck itself. I hated that one. That 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 was the that was the black that, that's the black sheep of Stargate. That's the black sheep of Stargate. Hands down, that's the black sheep. What's the strangest thing you've seen in your life? I'm going up to tech school. You're gonna love this is a good story. This this this, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Okay? Now, I've seen some weird cars. I have seen some weird bicycles. I have seen a lot of weird stuff. This is the thing that takes the cake. And I will never forget this. So, I'm going up to tech school. Now, I had to take one of two ways to get there. And I always like taking the scenic route occasionally because I, I'm going to get pissed at that fly. I usually would take the scenic route because at the time, I was not a fan of taking the direct route. The direct route usually had more traffic, more aggressive drivers. I was still new to driving at the time, especially on highways and stuff like like that. I'm really getting tired of this fly. Um, so I would take the scenic route, which was, it, granted, it was still a highway. It was still a bypass, but I would take that way because there was a little less traffic. It wasn't as heavily traveled, and there was a lot more, there was more maneuverability than there was going the direct route. Nowadays, I'll, I'll take either or. I don't care because I'm a little more experienced now. But back then, I wasn't as experienced as I am now. So I'm taking this way. I'm going up to school. And the traffic this time of the morning is usually a nightmare, which is eh, fine, whatever. It's, it is what it is. So I'm going up to, sc I'm going up to class, and the traffic's going at a nice pace. We're going about 55, 60 miles an hour. I'm keeping pace with everybody else. And literally, we're like, there's like maybe two cars that could fit between us at the time. And over in this other lane, in the passing lane, this red car just pulls up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now, I have to slow down a little bit because traffic's backing up. And they had to slow down a little bit because traffic's backing up. And I'm like, oh, I want to see this car. It's like, I could see it in the mirror. I caught like a little glimpse of it in the side mirror. And I'm like, oh, I want to see this car. I'm going to look over. I look over to my left. And there's a guy sitting in that car changing his pants. Perfect control of the vehicle. Did not miss a beat on the accelerator and brake. I, I swear I had to be on cruise control. Had to have been. But all of a sudden I'm like, change your pants. They were Levi's. That is the strangest thing I have ever seen in my life. Is a person who's changing their pants while driving a car. It is like if you've ever seen the movie, uh, the 1980s version of Dragnet, the movie with Tom Hanks and uh, Dan Aykroyd. There is a line that uh, Tom Hanks says where he goes, he knows that having sex in a Yugo is a logistical impossibility. I always thought it was an impossibility for people to be able to change pants in a car. Well, that that driver pulled through me wrong. <laughs> that was uh, that was the strangest thing I've I have ever seen in my life. I've seen some weird shit. I have seen some weird shit. <laughs> that was the strangest I have ever seen. Hand, hands down, that's the strangest thing. Funny as hell too. But that is the strangest thing I've ever seen. All right, last question. Your thoughts on the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series? Oh, God. <clears throat> All right, let's dive into this little nightmare well, shall we? <clears throat> so, my thoughts on the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series. So, D-H-M-I-S. I hate it. I, I, I hate it. I was not a fan of the original six episodes that were like X amount of minutes long that I felt like were really drawn the fuck out. They went from, okay, somebody's making like a weird ass puppet show to, okay, and what part of the dark net did you crawl out of? Um, 
I just was not a fan of it. I was not a huge fan of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. And then when I found out they are making a series, I was like, oh my god, why? How many people actually liked this? Well, apparently a lot. They got a series. An actual, it was on TV series. Like, over in the UK. And, uh, the first, the six episodes um, were put up on YouTube not too long ago, and I've seen them. Mostly out of curiosity sake. Well, I'm like, this couldn't have. This couldn't have possibly. Oh my god, no. It got worse. Oh, oh, sweet god. Now, I will admit. I will admit this. The intro song is good. I like the intro song. I get that stuck in my head. Of course, it would work for a show that's called Just Three of Us. But, um, sure. Whatever. Keep it for Don't Help Me, I'm Scared. I don't care. The episodes are creepy as fuck. The final episode, episode six, Electricity. Oh, boy. Um, that gave you a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that, um... Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. That was a mind fuck. And I showed uh, the first episode to my mom. Because I'm like, here, I want you to see this. This is that Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series. And the look on her face. Priceless. As she's trying to figure out what in the holiest parts of hell um, this series brought out. Nothing. It was, it was disturbing. So, my thoughts on Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared series? I I don't like it. And then again, I wasn't a fan of the original. I'm not a fan of this. It's not my type. Now, if you want me to... If you want to make, like, an adult puppet show, I'm all for making an adult puppet show. Granted, I did not ever see Happy Time Murders. And I was told never to see it. I've seen clips. Fine, I've seen clips. Whatever. Clips aren't going to do it. The clips... And all honesty, the clips do the movie better justice than from what I've read the reviews for. So go figure on that one. But as far as... um, If you want to make an adult puppet show, go for it. There was Greg the Bunny. I remember watching that when I was a kid. My mom was pissed. There was Greg the Bunny. There was... Oh, Happy Time Murders. Uh, I, Oh, um, Crank Yankers. Ah, I loved Crank Yankers. That was a good show. There's Crank Yankers. Um, if you want to make an adult puppet show, that's fine. Make a Sesame Street for adults. You will never hear me argue that. Now we does it. We adults deserve an adult Sesame Street. As far as don't hug me, I'm scared. See, tra see this trash can? That's where don't hug me, I'm scared can go. That is exactly where the series can go. Right in the trash. I'm not I am not a fan of it. I'm sorry. For all of you out there that like Don't Hug Me I'm Scared, I'm not a fan of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. I think Don't Hug Me I'm Scared is stupid. Horrifying and just fucking evil. Hands down. So that's all the questions I got though for this month. Um, like I said at the start of the video, I do not know if there's going to be a Q&A for uh, October, November, or December this year. The reason being is that um, with my uncle's passing, my mom and I are now back to having the questionable, are we going to be able to stay living where we are, or are we going to be living out of our car? Because some of the family are now getting really uptight and really uppity, um, laying into us about this and that, so we don't know what's going to happen. Um, if there will be a QA and a video, if I will be able to record one, I will say something. I'll put out a notice, so keep an eye on Twitter. Keep an eye on the Facebook page. So my Twitter is Roads. If I think of the editing right, I will put it right about here. Note to self, I should watch this. I'll put it right about here. I'll leave a time mark. Okay. I'll put it right around here. At Otaku Roads, or better, no, better yet, I'll just leave it in the description. Fuck that, I'll, I will forget to do that. I'll put it in the description. Um, 
so you can follow me over on Twitter, and I will put up, hey, going to do a Q&A video this month. Do you have your questions? Drop them. It'll be a quick impromptu or something. Uh, keep an eye on the Web Designer 18 Facebook page, and I'll let you, I will let you know. Otherwise, I have no idea if there's going to be any more Q&A videos uh, this year, or if there's ever if I'm even going to be able to do any more videos at all. I don't know, but that's where I'm at. So I can't give a time frame for this one. But if you have questions, um, ask them in the comments, and I'll just answer them right away. Um, if I do have if I do manage to get a chance to do one, I uh, will do it. If not. Hey, it was fun while it lasted. But anyway, I'm Andrew Rhodes. I will catch you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you can be made aware of when the new videos drop right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. Bye, everybody.